Here are the most needed balance changes to save the game. It's clear that the meta is pretty bad right now. You either die instantly or nothing dies at all. Let's start with the tanks. Orissa is the number one wanted criminal. She's only really good to focus on the enemy tank and mark them for the whole game. That's her role, that's what she's good at. She matches them and duels them to stop them from doing anything. When it comes to trying to kill backline, other tanks are way better. She also isn't as good appealing for her team as other tanks. So she's kind of in a twilight zone where she just has to focus the enemy tank. Her fortifying needs to be nerfed, from 50% back to 40. We'll make it still a strong tool to survive getting pressured, but when the enemy has enough focus fire, they'll still be able to kill you. Her spin should also be given more speed in exchange for a longer cooldown. The spin is pretty lackluster, since as mobility, it's not great, and just another damage soaking ability makes the game very boring. Her fortify is perfect for that anyway. So for Orisa, mobility up and fortify resistance down. For more content to learn how to break the meta or even use it to your advantage, check out the link in the description below for a Game Leap membership. There's tons of guides for tons of different metas and obviously every hero. So check it out and widen your hero pool for the changes that are soon to come in the mid-season patch. Now Nermatra. Ramatra's always had a rough time in ranked. In coordinated play, he's seen some playtime. Punching through shields and blocking focus fire helps a lot between super sweaty teams. But in ranked, he's very clunky. Spam damage stops him from punching with his nemesis form, and he struggles to get his abilities out fast enough to really punish people who are playing too aggressive. A cast time reduction to his slow, meaning he can throw it out faster and shoot earlier, would help to land more effective vortexes that you can also take advantage of with your team. He doesn't need too much else, since any more speed to his nemesis form or even extra damage would make him seriously strong. Now on to the massive mystery that is Roadhog. I have no idea what they have planned for his rework, but he seriously needs to get some sort of change since all he does now is just throw a hook every 6 seconds. Sometimes it kills, sometimes it doesn't, but most often, not. And his hook even if it really doesn't fit Overwatch 2, is still his identity. I'd like to see Blizzard try to increase the cooldown of Hook and give it more movement control, so it can truly be a displacement tool. He could work as a grappler, grabbing people who are close to him and putting them in danger. Right now, Hog is slowed slightly while hooking, so if his slow is removed and his control of his hook target increased, he can really punish isolated frontliners. To balance this, he could use a range decrease on his hook, maybe from 20 meters to 50 meters, even though a lot of hooks will feel messed up about it. But you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. The muscle memory will come back. Probably. Let's move on to the DPS. Bastion is obviously crazy strong, but the thing that makes him really frustrating to play against is his grenade. The size really is way too big after the buff, so that's definitely first on the nerf list. Change the size of the grenade back to how it was before. On top of that, getting hit by the grenade sends you flying, so the knockback on his grenade should be pulled back. It's way easier to hit than Junkrat's conch mines and is way more consistent, so it should be nerfed slightly. It's fun to have a bouncy grenade that moves people upwards, but on the receiving end, not so much. It's even been a deciding factor in a few pro games, where a random grenade knocks someone up for a crazy pick. It feels really unfair, because you can't really do too much about the ricochet grenade hitting you from the back. The next menace of ranked, Torb. After his fire rate change, he's really become a simple choke spammer. He already was before, but now, he's the boss at it. His projectiles are just constantly flying. Because his overload gives him ammo as well, his ammo count could also stand a nerf. From 18 to 16 should make it easier to take advantage of his downtime, which is still really rare, considering he can just sit in his backline and spam on top of a turret defending the flank. He's pretty overtuned. A damage nerf from 70 per slug to 65 would also make getting two taps by spamming a corner happen much less often. It's really rough to just try to rotate and a Torb just two taps you for no reason, just because he's spamming the right angle. Now onto Reaper. Reaper in Ranked has always been a bit rough the higher up you go. After he gets forced out, he also struggles to successfully escape, which his Wraith should really help him with. If his Wraith speed was increased, he would be able to not only get out of fights faster, but also get into them. His ultimate doesn't fit well with the rest of his kit compared to Orisa, who can spin aggressively to then pull enemies together, or Genji who can dash up for his blade, or even Mei who can wall aggressively into her blizzard. Reaper can really only Wraith form into the enemy team, which makes it pretty obvious that he's about to use his ultimate. So if now Reaper were able to use his ultimate while in Wraith, instantly making him damageable, but starting his ultimate regardless, he could make more fast plays, especially baiting enemies, then flipping right back with a crazy flurry of shots. Shotguns. Most DPS have a way that they can make a play, Widow grappling up for a shot, Tracer going for a pulse bomb, but Reaper seriously needs his team's help to get aggressive. This is sometimes okay of course, like Genji asking for bubble for blade and Sojourn getting damage boost for her overclock, but both those characters and more can do something for themselves, like dash in or slide in. Reaper and his Wraith can't really compete, so this change would really help him turn up the tempo. Now for the final DPS, Farah. Farah is by no means a bad hero but she desperately needs a mercy to fully activate her potential. In the PvE, her jump jets and hover jets give her a movement speed buff, which can make her more agile and less reliant on sitting 40 meters up in the sky with a mercy beam to get value. 
Combine a movement speed buff with a shorter cooldown on jump jets and longer hover jets recharge rate and she'll be more of a launching in for an aggressive engage and she still has her concussive blast to help deal with anyone trying to intercept her fly through bombing. It makes her way more dynamic and still allows her to hit the skies and rain down fire. She might feel heavier though, so maybe her jump jets should have a larger capacity and an even lower recharge rate, similar to Valkyrie in Apex Legends. The kind of movement Pharah has is pretty strong, so it should be toned down so she's not always in the sky. It's really difficult to deal with, and you can't really catch her off guard. On to the supports, Lifeweaver. Even though Lifeweaver has been tuned to a pretty good spot, he's actually quite annoying to chase down in open parts of the map. When he has high grounds to rotate between and open space to fully push his pedal up, he's almost unkillable. It's pretty good that he's able to survive like this, obviously his hitbox being massive makes him really easy to kill most of the time. But at this point, he is super strong. Those shields help him out a lot too. Anyway, his platform HP is definitely really high, so most people don't bother shooting it. Toning it down from 400 to 300 or even 250 HP will make it more viable to focus to stop the Weaver from instantly escaping any pressure. Shooting objects and structures isn't very fun anyway, so it's important to make sure that they can break when they really are focused. His tree is also really frustrating to deal with. It's really hard to kill when the enemy team is pushing with it, so a simple revert from 1200 HP to 1000 will make it more viable to focus down. Even though it's not a lot of HP, it can't be headshotted, and it's buffing everyone in a massive radius, not just with heals, but now with overhealth. When the tree is placed aggressively, it's almost impossible to deal with the surge of players coming through. Sometimes it feels like a waste shooting the tree, but the HP it gives really means you have to shoot it down, or kite the fight. But whenever the response to an ultimate is to hide away and run, it definitely feels really not fun at all. Let's take a look at Mercy. Mercy is a really common character across all ranks, so buffing her or nerfing her makes a lot of difference. Her damage boost is now on par with Discord, and both of them are pretty balanced right now. So what can be changed about Mercy? Is she too strong or is she too weak? Personally, Mercy is always really good in pick-based metas since she can res it up and give your team a second chance. So my suggestion for a Mercy nerf would be for her res to not be able to be activated on a target unless they've been dead for 2 seconds or more. This gives teams time to respond and take advantage of the space they get after a pick, while also giving the Mercy a chance to res it if she has the abilities for it from her team. But mostly, instant reses, especially mid-air with Pharahs and Echoes, are some of the worst things to deal with in this game. So it's really important that it happens a lot less. And for a buff for Mercy, one of the things she struggles with is actually healing properly. So without changing the numbers, the Linger effect could be changed. The Linger effect means that when you heal or damage boost a teammate, if you break line of sight, the beam will remain for 1.3 seconds. This can be increased to 1.5 so Mercy can more effectively play on corners. Pushing corners as Mercy often means that the Mercy has to put herself in danger in order to follow up, but now she's able to sit back a little bit safer. Let me know what you think about Mercy in the comments below, she's really a hot topic on whether to nerf or buff. Right now I'd say she's pretty okay, but there's always room for improvement. Let's finish off with Moira. Most of the other supports have good niches that aren't really being threatened, but Moira has always been in a rough spot. Still good in some brawl comps, but Bap or Kiriko almost always beat her out at higher levels of play. Giving her some utility is important, and the easiest way is to adjust her heal and damage orbs to support her team's speed and engage. If her heal orbs gave 20% extra speed, and her damage orbs slowed you by 20% of your speed, Moira could actually make plays happen on her own, rather than having to pump heals into her frontline, or even fade the backline and tear them up as hard as she can. 20% is the speed boost that Ramatra gets when he enters his nemesis form, so it will help when stacking with other speed sources, but will also support characters like Ryan as well to get to the targets when the Moira uses her abilities aggressively. It probably wouldn't be too much, but any speed is good speed, so I'm curious to see how powerful Moira could become. New mid-season patch notes are coming later this week, so keep an eye on this channel to stay updated, and thanks for watching.